Hey everyone, welcome back. This is our fourth devotional during our Passion Week. We hope that you've had an amazing time uh, the rest of the days, just really diving deep into the story and asking the Lord to reveal more to you than what you've seen before. Um, going back to Sunday, obviously we had Palm Sunday where Jesus rides into Jerusalem on the donkey. And, um, and then on Monday, we talked about how he goes directly to the temple and, and why the temple was important and, and why he would have been angered at the fact that, you know, there were people in the temple selling things and, and doing the very things they weren't supposed to in, the, in, the, in God's house, in his father's house. And then yesterday, Josh spoke about how, you know, he would have spent some time in the temple, his very last time in the temple, teaching uh, some very crucial things that we live by, that we, you know, teach and, and we're moved and challenged by. And today is very different because it almost feels like the story kind of drops off. Um, we don't know where Jesus is on Wednesday. You see, sometimes people call this day Silent Wednesday because there's not really any record of what he's doing on Wednesday. Um, but we do have record of, of someone who is very crucial in this story. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and John, you know, we've, we've talked about a little bit, you, the timelines are a little bit different, but the overall part of the story is very, very obvious. Um, so I'm gonna be reading our story out of Luke 22 today. And, and then I just wanna leave you with some questions, just some food for thought of what would have happened on this Wednesday. So if you grab your Bibles, pick up with me in Luke 22, verse one. It says, the festival of unleavened bread, which is also called Passover, was approaching. The leading priests and te teachers of religious law were plotting how to kill Jesus, but they were afraid of the people's reaction. Now in Mark, we're told that he specifies this would have happened two days before Passover, which leads us to believe that we're talking about Wednesday here. But picking up in verse three, this is where our, our key uh, character comes into play. Then Satan entered Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12 disciples, and he went to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to portray Jesus to them. They were delighted and they promised to give him some money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him when the crowds weren't around. So we have Silent Wednesday. We don't know where Jesus is. As a matter of fact, maybe spend some time thinking about where would Jesus have gone in the silence? What, what would he have done? Where would he have spent his time in, in preparation for the next few days? We know what the next few days um, were, were going to be about. But the disciples, where would they have gone? Would they have been next to Jesus? We do know where this one disciple went in silence though. Judas Iscariot goes to the, the leading priests and the captains of the temple, and he says, I know where the man is that you're looking for. You see, there's a lot that can happen when there's a silent time. Where do you go when it's silent? What do you do when things seem to settle down and aren't so busy? and you finally have some time to sit and to think about your life and, and take into account all the things going on around you. You see, I like to spend my mornings and sometimes at my silent times making coffee. Maybe you like to make a cup of tea, maybe you like coffee as well. But for me, going to make a cup of coffee is quite the process. You see, there's a lot that happens. I don't just have a machine that you can push a button and all of a sudden, you know, an espresso is made. But I don't really want one of those because I like the time that it takes to make this cup of coffee. Because when I sit down in my silent, in my quiet time, then I really get to enjoy the process that it takes to make this really, really tasty, good cup of coffee. And then I sit down and, and you know, maybe I have my Bible or a book or a journal. And that, that's where I like to go in the silence. And I like to know that I'm surrounded by, by Jesus and His presence and, and sometimes, you know, just having this cup of coffee, even though it's not necessary, is comforting, right? Maybe you have that thing that's comforting to you. Maybe it's a good cup of tea or maybe it's a nice snack. What do you do in the silence? Think about it. And maybe that can cause you to think, what would Jesus have done? And 
one of the things that I really want us to dive into in the comparison of maybe your answers and what you come up with and what you ask Jesus, where, are we, where what does your character say? What would you have done in this time? In contrast, we see that there's someone that takes the silence to a different level. He's maybe bothered by the silence. He's confused. He's starting to question and starting to come up with things or scenarios in his mind of Jesus. And it actually leads him to betray him. It leads him to, to sell him out. And sometimes that can happen if we listen to too many voices in the silence. Sometimes it can maybe put us in a hard place of questioning Jesus or pointing the finger at God of what he's not doing or what he, you know, what he did. And it causes us to turn our backs on him. The, the enemy likes silence we see in this, this story. And I think sometimes he likes to, to put our minds at, um, you know, in, in turmoil within ourselves. But what I love is that God loves silence, but he loves it because if we draw near to him in the silence, it says that he's gonna draw near to us. And so we're in this kind of crazy time. And right now where you're at might be the most amount of time that you've ever had time just to sit and think and just to take in what's around you. And maybe you're starting to go a bit crazy and maybe starting to ask yourself all sorts of questions. But I encourage you to take this time of silence as we remember this silent Wednesday. Ask yourself, Jesus, what, what would you do? What would you do in this time? And, and really, really nestle in to his arms, nestle into his presence and take into consideration what he was preparing for over the next few days. And hopefully that in and of itself will just help you to prepare for the next few devotionals that we have and for this Passover that's coming up where we can really take the time to question and really dive in to what Jesus was thinking, why he, how he was preparing and what he was going to do for us in this Passover time. And so my prayer for you is to really feel strengthened in the silence, not weak and not, not you know, busy in your mind, but feel strengthened in this time, knowing that you are exactly where you're supposed to be if you're in your Father's arms and you know that His presence is surrounding you. And so take the time, read this story, ask Jesus to show you what, why the silence is important and why, what it can do for you to help you um, gear up for the, for the days ahead and ask Him just simply to reveal more of Himself to you. And so get your Bible out, get your journal out, dive into these scriptures and we pray that you have an amazing time and we'll see you tomorrow.